one of the biggest pain points when doing astrophotography with the Schmidt Cassegrain telescope is focusing or better autofocusing. Why this is such an issue and what we can do about it and the best solution that I found for it right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So what is exactly the problem when autofocusing with the Schmidt Cassegrain? The issue lies with how a Schmidt Cassegrain focuses. It's not like with a refractor, which has a focuser, which actually moves the camera further or closer to the lens. But with the Schmidt Cassegrain, the whole primary mirror is actually moved up and down. Now this brings two problems with it. The first is that the mirror, as it is not permanently fixed somewhere, it can get some flexure, move around a little bit when you're actually slewing and it might, this might destroy your whole focus. For that purpose, you have on the Celestron Edge HD telescopes two knobs where you can actually fix the mirror once you focused so that it, so that it doesn't move anymore. But that brings another problem with it because when you fixed it, you cannot use, for example, uh, EAF anymore to do autofocus during the night because it's permanently blocked. So if because of temperature shift, for example, the focus changes, well, so be it. You rather stay up and regularly refocus. But let's go back to the mirror. The other problem is that moving a mirror up and down is just not as smooth as drawing with a very precise drive, you know, a camera forth or back. Depending if you lower the mirror or up at the mirror, it might actually land on a different position, which makes autofocus, depending on your individual SCT, either challenging or just outright impossible. With my CPC 800, I actually never really accomplished to do autofocus with it. So what is the solution? The solution is that you put a precision focuser at the end of your SCT, where you can then, in the same manner as with a refractor, focus with a high precision. Now this is also not without its issues, because as you might know, with SCTs you have a very exact back focus distance. As soon as you go away from this back focus distance, you might get back focus issues, eggy stars at the corners. So when you move the focuser back and forth in the back, you automatically get out of the correct back focus distance, which means you have to ensure that the focuser has to do as few as possible. It's still better being 100% in focus and having a little bit of back focus artifacts than being generally out of focus. But we want to minimize it as possible. So how does that work? We're actually focusing first manually with the mirror. We focus until we feel we are in focus with the help of a Batinov mask and then we fix the mirror. And we do that obviously with having the focuser in the back at the right distance to have perfect back focus. And once we have done that, we let Nina or ASI Air do an autofocus routine. And then obviously the autofocuser might deviate a little bit to get to perfect focus. And then through the night, this can happen regularly and you're always in perfect focus. Now, what are the options? If you wanna have the best solution possible, then you have to look at Prima Luce Lab, as so many times, and go with the ESATO. The ESATO robotic focuser is just everything in one. It's just made for exactly that purpose. But it obviously has one big disadvantage. You cannot use it with an ASI Air. 
And that's the reason why I'm standing here and I do not have an Esato in my hands. Because I decided that with my SCT, I want to use my SIBO 2600 MC Air to actually being able to do without an issue also off-axis guiding and with that enhance my chances of have a decent guiding. So what I was looking for is a focuser which I can use including an EAF on the focuser. Now in one of my last videos I talked about lesson learned but obviously of a mistake somebody else did. Let's talk now about a lesson learned of a mistake that I did because I found a rather cheap focuser and I ordered it and when I actually unboxed it, I was thinking this thing is actually quite long. <laughs> and, and it really needed that, that I had it in my hand, I looked at it and I was like, okay, I have some space. You know, it's much more space behind the SCT than behind the refractor where you have 55 millimeters. Here we have 140 six millimeters so so that's quite long so when you order it you don't really think about it yeah no problem but then it had about 120 millimeter <laughs> and i was starting to calculating and at the end i realized that even if i would have to focus it completely close that i also have a filter wheel on my camera that it even would be already too long so i had to send it back looking for another one and now I found the perfect one and I want to show it to you. This video is not sponsored, I bought that myself. So and this is the focuser that I ended up with now. It's a Bader SCT Diamond Steel Track Focuser. Now there's a lot of things that I like about it. Let's start with the only thing I don't like about it. It weighs a kilogram, two pounds. So it adds a lot of additional weight which will probably increase the guiding error, yada, yada, yada. So it's the same rabbit hole we're always in in astrophotography. But that's really the only thing that speaks against this monster. One thing that is great is that it really has diamonds in there, which kind of make it ultra precise. So that's also where it has its name from. So what do I like? First of all, it is ultra short. It's only 80 millimeters. So you have ample of space for filter wheel, rotator, off-axis guide, or whatever you want to put on the other side. Second of all, it is really ultra smooth. It's unbelievable. When you turn it, it just glides. It's really an amazing feeling to, <laughs> to shift this around. So that also speaks for the precision. It can actually hold six kilograms of equipment to the back. That's more than enough for whatever you want to hang on to it. The tube here is 55 millimeters. So it actually ensures that you don't generate additional vignetting with it. It has zero backlash also from a precision point of view. So I haven't tested yet, but I would assure it's really the perfect thing to autofocus with it. Another thing that I really, really, really like, out of whatever reason, most if not all of these focusers, they end here on the camera side, not with an M48 or whatever, but with a two inch IP slot, where you then actually have to put in an IP adapter, it goes to an M48 or whatever, and I never liked that. First of all, it's a source for tilt. And second of all, these screws, with time, with vibration, they might get loose. And I always have nightmares thinking of simply the whole camera and filter wheel and everything just falling out of it to the floor. So but what this here has is it has some little screws here that you can, this whole part, you can take away and also based on that you save a little bit of length again and then you come to S58 and then you have these adapters where you can actually put it on whatever you want. I have here an adapter to M48 
So I will move this away, put the adapter on, and then I can right away put the camera or the filter wheel or whatever I want to connect it. That's actually the only focus that I found that has the system. So this I really like. And then obviously the last question, right? I wanted to connect the EAF to it, but can I? And the answer is yes, but I also feel like a fool because I have a 3D printer, which I like. And I also know how cheap it is to 3D print something if you know how it looks, what you want to print, right? Now, and this is probably the best example ever of intellectual property because someone developed an EAF converter to that where you can easily then install your EAF to the focuser. And the part looks like this. It is obviously 3D printed, not even very well. You can easily see that. <laughs> And they charge for it, guess, $80. $80 for this, probably it would cost around $2 of filament max to print this out. And they charge $80. But as you do not know how it looks like, either you are very creative and you, <laughs> you invent your own one, or you just spend the money. <laughs> so, so, I, so I paid the money, but I mean, it's, it's a brilliant business, business model if you think about it. So yeah, but anyway, I bought it, but then I can actually put my EAF on it and, and I think it will be the perfect solution for autofocusing on any SAT. So the, on, the, on the SCT side, there is the adapter which goes right on all the Celestron SCTs, be it the Edge HD or the regular XLTs. So that was today a little bit something niche, but as you watched, as I see, it seems to still be of interest to you. If you have any questions about it, if you want to know anything else about how to astrophotograph with the SCT, just please put it in the comment below. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. See you next time and clear skies.